Excellent. Okay, let's start with the second part of this uh, CO4. Before that, we saw the static polymorphism and we learned that static polymorphism is a more is a is something which is evaluated at compile time and then we saw different examples and now it's the second part is dynamic polymorphism the other name for this uh, dynamic polymorphism is runtime polymorphism why it is runtime because this if you have something in your program which you can call a dynamic polymorphism then that would be evaluated at the running time of your program when your program will run and it will give you the output at that time this this sort of uh, polymorphism will be evaluated and what is this we will see now uh, in a dynamic programming uh, or in a dynamic not programming not polymorphism dynamic programming is a different thing <clears throat> uh, dynamic polymorphism you will have at least two classes at least more than two are possible but at least you will have two classes one is parent other is child and then you have some method which is existing in parent class and when you are going to write the child class you uh, you will introduce the same method which is existing in parent class you will introduce that same method with the same name and with the same argument list again in the child class. And the same method that you will introduce in the child class, now this method would be called overriding method. And the same method which is existing in the parent class would be called overridden method. And when you have the overridden and overriding methods in your in your program and the methods have the same name and the same argument list then how and if you call that method because the name is same then which method would be called the method from the parent class or the child class so this so this confusion uh, will be resolved at runtime. That which method compile, which method you from from your program and from your classes, which method should be called? This should be resolved at runtime. So now, if you will see here, dynamic polymorphism is a process in which a call to an overridden method. And what is the overridden method? The method which is available in the parent class. And what is the method which is a, if the, if the same method is available in the child class, what is the name for it? Overriding method. So a process in which a call to an overridden method, which means the method, the same method which is available in the parent class, and if you are calling that method in your program, so that call will be resolved at runtime. And due to this runtime, we are calling this dynamic polymorphism also the runtime polymorphism. And we know that the, the, there is another name for this dynamic polymorphism, and that is dynamic method dispatch. So now you have three names, dynamic polymorphism, <laughs> runtime polymorphism, and dynamic method dispatch. But this word dynamic method dispatch is a little bit different and you will see the difference. <clears throat> and especially here on this slide, we are basically explaining this dynamic method dispatch, but it is also a dynamic polymorphism. 
It is also a runtime polymorphism. So that's why all the names are there. And here on this right hand side, now we have two classes. First class is ABC. The name of the second class is XYZ. ABC is our parent class. XYZ is our child class. The child class has is some method which is we we can call that method overriding method and the name of that method is my method okay let's see for example here we have the class abc starting bracket and ending bracket and in this class we have a method the name of method is my method return type is void and public is also available you can remove this public it, it's not an issue and this is the starting bracket and this is the enclosing bracket of that method and it has only one statement system.out.println and we are just printing that this is overridden method why we are calling overridden method you will understand all these things when we will complete this program now we have another class which is xyz and we are making this class the child of this parent. And how we can do that, this is inheritance. We can use the keyword extends. And XY extends and write the name of the parent class, that is ABC. And now what is happening? This is the starting bracket and this is the ending bracket of this class. And now due to this keyword, what is happening now? Now this XY class is becoming the child of your parent class ABC. When some class is becoming the child of some parent class, then it means that that child class can access the whole information which is available in that class. Whole information means if there are some variables, you can access them. If there are some methods, you can access them in the child class. Okay. Now, 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 again, in the child class, we have another method, which is the my method, the same name, the same name and the same parameter list. We don't have any parameter into it, but it is same. So my method and the my method is same. When you have the same method available in the parent class and also in the child class with the same name and uh, parameter list, this implementation is, is not a, in a question. We are not putting any question that what you have in that method. You can have different things in, in that method. For example, here the statement is different. Here the statement is system.out.println and overriding method. We are printing a different message here. Here, different message. So that is the use actually. That is the use of dynamic polymorphism. The use is this, that if you have the same method available in the parent and child class, then parent class method has its own body and the child class can have its own body. They have their own features. They have their own statements. And in this way, you can increasing the functionality of your code. You, this child class is doing its own function and this parent class is doing its own things. And the same method now, which is available in the parent class is called overridden method. That's why we, for understanding we have, we are displaying also the same message. This is overridden method. And the method which is available, same method, which is available in the child class is called overriding method. Okay. Now, now, I hope that you have understood what is written here in this definition. Now, at least you understood that what is overridden and what is overriding. So the same method which will be available in the child class, that would be called overriding. And the same method which would be available in the parent class would be called overridden. And now, okay, that method is ended here. And now we have the main method starting from here and ending here. And in the main method, we are creating an object first because we want to use the information available either in the X, uh, either in the child class or either in the parent class. It depends on the object that you will create. 
Here we are creating an object and we are writing ABC, which is the name for the parent class and OBJ, this is the name for the object equal to new XYZ. And on the right hand side, you are using XYZ, which is the name for the child class. Before that, you didn't do that because you have the same things on the left hand side and the right hand side in your earlier practice. For example, you can write here XYZ, OBJ is equal to new XYZ. You, then you understand this is an object. But now we are changing the left hand side and the right hand side. So right hand side it will do what? Right hand side will call a default constructor from the child class because the name is child is this this is the name of the child class x y z and that default constructor will create a memory due to this new keyword we normally create a memory like you have it for the object so we are creating memory and then we are assigning that memory to this object obj but this object has the type ABC. This has the type ABC. So anyhow, whatever this object is, we, we, we know now due to this right hand side, this object which has the type parent, which means which has the type of the parent class, but it is containing the memory of the child class due to right hand side. And now what is the benefit of this thing? When you will, so due to this right hand side, when you will call different methods, when you will call, for example, like that, here we are calling obj dot my method. We are calling something. This is the my method. This is also the my method. So which method would be called? We don't know. But this object will decide. And how it will decide? By looking at the right hand side. Due to this right hand side of this object creation statement, right, right hand side is the memory for the child class. So that memory is assigned here. So obj.my method, which method would be called? The method of the child class because it has the, it, the, the this obj has the memory for the child class. So due to this right hand side, from these two methods, which are the same methods, which method would be called? The method of the child class. So this method would be called, and in this method, we have only one statement, overriding method. That will be displayed on the output screen. So when you have, when you are creating an object, and when the right-hand side is a child class, and the left-hand side is a parent class. This is called dynamic method dispatch. Normally dispatch means, for example, in the post office, when they have different letters and when they are sending those letters towards the destination from their offices, that is called dispatch. So dynamic method dispatch means at runtime, now you are finalizing that which method should be called. What is the destination for this object, for this call, for this call, obj.my method? You are finalizing the, that destination. So you are dispatching actually. So this is basically called dynamic method dispatch. Whenever in an interview question, this if it is asked, dynamic, what is method dispatch? Then you can say, if you have the parent class and the child class, and you have the overridden method and the overriding method, and when you are going to create an object, and if the then right-hand side should be the child class and left-hand side should be the parent class, and when you will call those overridden or overriding method, then the overriding method would be called. This is called dynamic method dispatch. This is called dynamic method dispatch. Yes. Both sides of 
if both sides should be the child class, then this is your previous practice. Then only the methods of the child class will be accessed. Yeah, the child class, uh, then it's the parents class. So it's same as you have. You will understand these things. It is mentioned here. Maybe it would be the answer of your question. Here, now this program is finished. But if your object would be like that for this program, for example, here, if you have the left hand side and the right hand side both are same, ABC, OBJ, new OBC. And if you are calling obj.my method, obj.my method, so this, the right hand side is the parent, left hand side is the parent. And if you are calling obj.my method, which method would be called? The method of the parent due to this right hand side. Similarly, if you have x, y, z, obj is equal to new x, y, z. So now this is your question. The right hand side is child and the left hand side is child. And if you are calling obj.my method, which method from these two would be called? The method of the child class. This is the answer of your question. The same as the, same as the last. So you are saying this is the same as the last? No, there is a different. Yeah, there is a different. I will I will explain. Yeah, there is a different. The difference normally lies with the non-overridden method. This is something a overridden and overriding method. So that's why you are not seeing any difference. But if you have some other methods, which are only some methods would be only for the parent class and some methods would be only for the child class. They would not be overriding or overridden. Then how you can call them? Then, then these things will be different. You will see. There is an example somewhere. I will not leave anything. Uh, <laughs> so all the things are there. There is an example somewhere. Uh, yes, maybe. When we will be here, those differences will be uh, explained. Restrictions on the method of writing. And he, I, will, I will explain these things here. And now, for the last, when you have the right hand side the child and the left hand side the parent and if you are calling methods which is which is in question or which is the overridden or the overriding method which is the same method so due to this right hand side obj dot my method will call the method of the child classes so in this slide we are just discussing the overridden and the overriding methods. And then there is a question then, what about the other non-overridden or non-overriding methods? That is still a question. And we will answer that question here on this slide, okay? And everything then will be clear. Just wait for a few moments. Now. Yes, uh, in this in this uh, last object, you have know, A, B, B, C. Here? Yeah, yeah. So okay. What's, so what's the outcome? The vice versa. X, Y, Z object is equal to new A, B, C. What is the outcome of this statement? No, no so but vice versa. By? Vice versa. Vice versa, okay. If you will shift this ABC here and XYZ here, then you have the compiler error. Compilation error. This is, you cannot do here in Java. You cannot assign the memory of father to your child class. Father is your father. <laughs> you cannot assign father to your child, okay? So that is restricted in Java. That is not allowed. Okay. <clears throat> this is the answer for your question. And now, 
after having the information from this first slide, now we can build finally some definitions. And those definitions are for method overriding and the overridden method. So when you are declaring or when you are writing a method in the child class, in the subclass, which is already present in the parent class, what is this? When you are writing this my method in the child class, which is already available in the parent class, what is this? This is called, this, this step is called method overriding. Because you are going to write the method for the child class. And that method is called method overriding. And the method which would be available in the parent class, that is called overridden method. You know that already from the previous slide. You know that what is overriding method and what is overridden method. Okay. And the method available in the child class is called override. Writing method. Okay, these are the terms now which are now has become permanent in our minds. Moving next. Now we have almost the same example again. And here in this example, we have a boy class. And then which is becoming the child of this human class. And both classes in the and the in a, this human which is the parent class is has some method which is eat, and this boy also has the same method eat. So now this eat method which is in the parent class is is what overridden or overriding? Overridden, yes. And this method, which is available in the uh, boy class, is overriding method. <clears throat> and in the human class, this eat has this method starting from here, ending here, and it has the message human is eating. And in the boy, this eat method, which is ending here, has the message boy is eating. So, the, so both of the methods have their own implementation, have their own statements. And now in the main method, we are creating what? Boy, OBJ, new boy. Here we are not making different left-hand side and right-hand side. It's the same. So we are creating an object for the boy class. And when you will do that, and when you will OBJ, when you will write obj.eat, which method would be called? Which method would be called by this subject? The easy way to understand is look at the right-hand side. Right-hand side is the side for the child class. And the left-hand side is also the same. So this is not an issue. obj.eat, that, that would call the method from the child class. And you will have that message. Boy is eating. Boy is eating. Now, advantage, advantage of method overriding. What would be the advantage of method overriding now after looking at these examples? What, what are the different things which you can say this is the advantage if something is coming into, you, into your mind? Advantage. What, yeah, what is the advantage of this? Maybe, overriding and overridden. Any other? Zen, what are you doing? Show me the screen of your phone. <laughs> Try.
try to think over it and then you will have the answer yes you can use any of the methods either is for the parents of the clouds going back any other we can have the, the same uh, name of the methods with a parent in the child and uh, can do, uh, choose any of the Without the that is one this is the same thing you are saying okay but that is not the main advantage mm -hmm. do you have an idea yes uh, I think because you are using the without the parents class, so which means you can use the the object that you can access directly to the child because the child can have the information of the of the parent class. So it's it's enabled to why for example why you are not thinking in this way that if you have this overridden and overriding method then you can have its own implementation in the parent class and its own implementation in the child class you can do things differently with this overriding method overriding for example this method eat and this method eat is same thing but if some method is same you can expect that they will do the same thing, but it is not the case. The method of the parent class can do something different, and that method in the child class can do something different. Their functionality. I'm not using the word functionality because then it would be a little bit difficult for you to understand. So I can use the word implementation. The implementation of this overridden method would be different from the from the implementation of this overriding method. So you can have the body of the overridden method can have different statements from the body of the overriding methods. That is the main benefit. That is the main benefit. So advantage of method overriding. So the class can salam alaikum. So the class can give its own specific implementation. There are two classes in previous example, this one and that one. So each class can give its own implementation to inherited method. For example, this is this word is for the child class. That child class can give its own implementation to its inherited method even without modifying the club parent class code even without modifying the method which is available in the parent class you can have your own implementation in for your child class uh, you, uh, right. i have to method same way but uh, doing uh, different uh, yeah different tasks you can perform different tasks in these two methods which have the same name so it's the same answer yeah the same answer that you can perform different tasks that is the same meaning as this point number one is saying <clears throat> okay that is the main advantage and the other advantage is that if you have many methods several if you have several child classes one parent class and several child class and every child class has th that method in it for example here you have the parent class and you have only one child class which has this each method if you have more than one 
child, child classes, which has the same method again. They are from one yeah, they can because you know the different types of inheritance. Yes. Multiple inheritance. So then what? Then what? That each child class will have the overriding method and that is different from the other child class and also different from the parent class. And this can happen in the real world. Something. And in humans, maybe, for example, our generation, my my tribe, your tribe is coming from... We have many... Sometimes one father has five, six, seven children and they have their own task. They have their own features. They have their own features. Even the thing is same. You can implement the same concept in the real world on different in, in, in organizations. Maybe one department has different child departments and they are performing one task according to their own departments and it can happen. Then you have to build the program like that. This is the advantage. Now that port portion, restriction in the method overriding. <clears throat> Dynamic polymorphism, runtime polymorphism, dynamic method dispatch. These are the names for the for the dynamic polymorphism. But actually, if somebody asks, what is dynamic method dispatch? Then you can say the same thing, but the object creation is different. Left-hand side should be parent and right-hand side should be the child for the dynamic method dispatch. Here, let's see this example and then we will see what is the difference. So here the class is ABC. Is it visible? Yes. <laughs> okay, then what we can do? It's better now? Yeah. So, okay, the class is ABC. This is, and starting from here, ending here. So this class is behaving as parent class. How I know that? From this next statement, okay? And then, then the class demo, this is the name of the class, extends ABC. So now this ABC is the parent class, and this demo is the child class. And this parent has some method. The name of the method is disp. Return type is void and it has only one statement, system.out.println. So this method of parent class. So this is the message we are displaying. This is the method of the parent class. And then in the child class, we have the, again the same method with the same name and argument list, starting and ending. And it has method, this method of the child class because this is child. And then we have now Another method, new method, and return type is void. And here we are printing a message, new method of the child class. We are in the child class. So, th so this disk method and this disk method is the same. So this is overridden and overriding. So this is method overriding, you can say. But this method, new method, it is not linked with that concept of method overriding a dynamic polymorphism. This is just a general method that you normally have in your previous chapter, CO3 or whatever. This is not, this is a simple method introduced one time in the child class and not existing anywhere in the other class. So this is a normal method. This is a normal method. And now we have the main method starting here and maybe where it is ending? Oh, this is the output which is coming over. Okay. 
So now this is the main method. And here we are creating an object, new ABC, new ABC, and this is the object. So left-hand side and the right-hand side is the same. So this is an object purely for the parent class. And similarly, we have an object here, new demo, the right-hand side is for the child class, and the left-hand side is the parent class, and OBJ2, okay, again, we have an issue here. Some picture is coming over it. New demo and the left hand side is the the type has the type parent class and this is the object obj2 and then we are calling obj2.desp 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 this is an here the left hand side and the right hand side is same and obj.desp which method would be called yes look at the right hand side and this will give you the decision because this this method is is the method which is overriding or overridden so this is overridden so this would so this method method of the parent class would be called and you will have this message displayed in the output screen method of the parent class and here new demo obj2 and obj2 dot disk which method would be called child due to this right hand side method of the child class and that's why you are saying this method of the child class, you are seeing that. But now, look at these sentences, which I mentioned here. Object can call the overriding methods of a child class. That is one thing, okay. Object can call the overriding methods of child class. Yes, here ob object is calling the overriding method of the object class, that is okay. And all the non-overridden method of the base class. And all the non-overridden method of the base class. This is the special case here. Because this is the example of dynamic method dispatch. In the dynamic method dispatch, the right-hand side is like child class and the left-hand side is the parent class. So this is an example of dynamic method dispatch. And when you have that, then object can call the overriding method of the child class. If you have the overriding method in the children class, like this disk, that can be called. That can be called. And what is the other difference? And all non-overridden methods of the base class. Here, this disp is a overridden method. If you have some other methods here with the name, for example, maybe with the name add, void, add, starting bracket, ending bracket, and you have the statements in it, that method would be the non-overridden method. Non-overridden method of the parent class. If you have some other methods here or after this method, then with this object, which is obj2, which has the left hand side, the parent class, then with this object obj2, you can call those methods, non overridden methods. You can call those non overridden methods. Are you getting what I am saying? Like, uh, the new yeah, yeah, the, like the new method. Yeah, here in the in the demo class, we have this new method, which is non-overriding method, or non-overridden, you can say. But this is the method for the child class, not for the parent class. But suppose if you have some other methods here, like for example, if new method one is here, new method two is there in the parent class, then those methods would don't have the same name like in the ch child class and it is called a non-overridden method. Then with this object, obj2, which has the left hand side, the parent and the right hand side, the child, then with this object, you can call those non-overridden methods of the 
parent class. You can call. You can call the non-overridden methods of the base class or parent class. But with this object OBJ2, now you are accessing this this method of the child class only. But if you want to access this new method, which is the non-overridden method for the child class, with this object OBJ2, no, it is not allowed. Then you have the compilation error like that. Then you have the compilation error. This is the difference. This is the difference. With this OBJ2, which has the right-hand side demo and left-hand side parent, you can call the non-overridden methods of the parent class, but you cannot call the non-overridden method of the child class, like new method here in the child class. I cannot call it. If I want to call it, what I have to do? Both sides should be the child class. And then I can access this new method. Good. Then I can access this new method. Okay. This is what written here. And this is what I'm saying that this is the example available here. Moving forward. Rules of method overriding in Java. <clears throat> Now there are six rules on these two slides, which you have to take care about. If you are overriding a method, when I say overriding a method, what it means that method is available in the parent class and now you are going to introduce that method in the child class. The same method, you are going to write it again in the child class with different implementation. That is what I am going to override a method. The previous topic was method overloading. For method overloading, inheritance is not needed. For method overriding, you can see in each and every program, we are uh, implementing the concept of inheritance. We are using the word extends. For overriding, inheritance is needed. Now, rule number one, when you are overriding a method, then the argument list, which means the parameter list, for example, disp is here, disp is here. If you have arguments here, we don't have any arguments, but you can write integer A, integer B, you can write R float or whatever. If you have the argument list, the argument list of the overriding method must match with the overridden method. This is the rule. This, the name, the name and the argument list of the overridden and the overriding method must match in number, in sequence and data types. The data types of the parameters, the number of the parameters, if there are two parameters here, there should be two. And the sequence, if integer first, float after, then integer first and float after should be there. The previous rules. So the argument list of the overridden and the overridden writing method must match. The word is must. Number two, <clears throat> if you are using access modifiers for the overriding method, access modifiers, what are those ones? Uh, Private, protected, public, default. So the access modifiers of the overriding method must be less restrictive than the overridden method. Access modifier of the overriding method, which is for the child class, must be less restrictive than the overridden method. For example, here, for example, here, here it is written, this is the pay, uh, overridden method and here it is, access modifier is public. And here, this is overriding method and the access modifier is protected. 
So this protected is is more restrictive than this public. Public means everything is open. Private is everything is closed. Protected is between the private and the public. So, but if you will see, this is the child class. This is the overriding method. This is overridden method. And rule is excess modifier of the overriding method, which means child class, must be less restrictive than the overridden method. So this is the overridden. So here, so this is the excess modifier. This is the excess modifier for the overriding. This is the excess modifier for the overridden. So it is, said, it is being said in the rule that this excess modifier must be less res restrictive than this one. But here the case is opposite. Here protected is more restrictive than public because public is wide, opened. And protected is more restrictive than this one. So if you will replace, if you will replace, if you will move this public here and protected there, then it would be according to this rule then it is okay and then you will not have this error here. Then you will not have this error here. Cannot reduce the visibility of the inherited method, which means child method. So here, public is opened, less restrictive. Protected is more restrictive. So you are reducing the visibility you are reducing the freedom of the uh, overriding method. So just reverse it and then it would be according to that rule. Hopefully, you understood this point. Which means that you can move protected here and public here. Then it means that protected is more restrictive than the public. And that is okay according to the rule. <laughs> Still, students are thinking. What you have explained is about the chance the protected way is the more more protected than the the parents. What does mean the structure? I am thinking for an Arabic word for you. I don't know. Maybe Mukayyad. Mukayyad is something, the per person in prison. Huh? Yes. Okay. So that is restrictive now. If, if, yeah, if I am walking outside, I am free. free. So private is something that is Mukayyad. Okay. Restrictive. Public is something which is free. Okay, and protected is something which is in between. Maybe that person is Mukayyad, not in jail, but in some other building, <laughs> in his own house. Okay, you can say. So protected is, is something. So these are different conditions of uh, Mukayyad, you can say. These are different conditions. Some is free, some is in between, and some is restrict restrictively imprisoned. So, what I'm saying that the child class should be more free than the parent class in terms of this, in terms of this overridden and overriding methods. Okay. Child class methods, only overridden and overriding. Child class overriding methods should be more free than this overridden parent class method. Because public means free. Protected mean a little free. Private means restricted. So when you have when you have mentioned when you will 
right protected here and public here then what it means this this method is more free than this this method look if you are not understanding that what it what means protected if you don't have the understanding of private protected or whatever the others are then you cannot understand what you have seen Parent class, yes. You then you don't understand the. This is the question because you don't understand what protected means, what public means, what private means. If some method is private here in this class. Can I access that method outside that class? Can I access? If some method is private here, can I access that method outside that class? No. Because that is Mukayyad. <laughs> okay. If some method is public here, can I access that method out outside the class? Yes. Because that method is now free. If some method is protected here, can I access that method here outside the class? Yes. Yeah. yes. It depends on the package and the folder. These, this was a table which I showed you in CO2 maybe, in the beginning of CO2, with green and red table. So these are the meanings of the different access modifiers, which is giving you that... If you will use protected, then what is the level of freeness? If you are using private, what is the level of freeness? I can use another good word. <clears throat> another good word. That word is called visibility in programming languages. We normally call them visibility. Visibility, either that thing is visible all the way or not. Private is not visible outside the class. Public is visible outside the class. Protected is visible outside the class. So, if, so you were questioning that how it is free. That was that. Uh, you say that uh, the level of the, the challenge is more free than than for for the for the parents. Yes, if this this method is private, and if that child method is public, which is more free from these two? Look again. If this this method is private, not public. What I'm saying, if this method is, if method of the parent is private. And the method of the child is public. Uh, Which method is more free? Uh, child. child. Yes, this is what I am saying. This is the rule you have to follow. You cannot write private here and public here. You cannot make parent class method more free than this child. This is what I am saying. Simple thing. And I don't understand where you are. You are in the jungle. You are not coming back. No, yeah, now you have the compilation error. In this program, you have that compilation error. That is mentioned here. So this program is not executing normally. This is giving you an error because you are, you are not giving the good thing. Okay, shukran. Now rule number three. Private, static, and final method. You can use these words with the methods. A method can be a static. A method can be a private. A method can be a final. We saw these things in CO2 with detail. Now it is your duty to revise all those things. So private, static, and final methods. If you have something written here, private, static, or final with the method, 
then you cannot override that method. Uh, you cannot simply override that method, except the static. There is some condition on a, a static. So private static final methods cannot be overridden as they are local to the class. If you have some methods with these words, final, static, are private, if some method is private, you cannot override. You cannot reuse or something like that. By the way, these are the rules according to the previous versions of the Java. In the new Java, some rules are now violated. We already checked in the previous semester. But this is the text which is coming from the textbook. So textbook is also has the old text. So these are the things that you can check uh, in Java. And with the previous semester, lab was with me, so we were checking. We checked all these things. So that's why I'm saying it to you. In the new versions of Java, some rules are violated here. <laughs> For example, here, static methods. Static methods can be redeclared in the subclass. If you have the static method here in the parent class, you can rewrite or redeclare them in the child class. But anyhow, just for a rule, just keep it in your mind that private, static, and final methods cannot be overridden. Just up to this point, this is the rule. Number four, overriding method. Overriding method would be in the child class. They can throw, there is some kind, there is a topic that is called exceptions. That would be maybe the next chapter, CO5, maybe next. Hopefully next. And there are exceptions means, this is not a true definition, but for your just, for your general understanding, exception mean error message. Exceptions mean error message. If you have some error in your program, your Java will give you some message. That is called exception. But this is not a true definition. We will see the true definition in, in the chapter. But for general understanding, it is, it, is, it, is, it is a statement for you. So overriding method can throw unchecked exceptions. There are two kinds of exceptions. Checked and un unchecked. Checked will be checked at compile time and unchecked will be checked at runtime. And then meaning of compile time and runtime is same as I already told you. But leave it. This will be cleared when we will be in that chapter. So overriding methods can throw, overriding method, if they have some kind of error, they can show that error message at runtime because method overriding is connected with the dynamic polymorphism method over for example method overriding is at runtime we are saying this thing from the previous slide that method overriding is at will be evaluated at runtime and if it is runtime then what kind of exceptions which are linked with the runtime? Unchecked exceptions. So then overriding methods can throw unchecked exceptions. The overriding method, if you have the overriding concept in your program, and if you have some error in that program, that error message will be given to you, will be given to a programmer at runtime. And that error message would be called unchecked exception. If you have the understanding, okay, good. If you not, then this will be uh, understood at that point in CU5. <laughs> so overriding method simply, the method which you introduced in the child class, they can throw unchecked exceptions. They can throw runtime errors. You can say like that. Okay, they can throw runtime errors. And they cannot throw 
checked exceptions because checked exceptions is at compile time, not at runtime. So that's why they can throw only unchecked exceptions. And overriding method. Overriding method is what? Runtime or compile time? Hmm? Runtime. Runtime. So when you will write a program and when you will run your program, then the decision between the overridden and overriding methods, this decision will be done at runtime. So the program like that, the binding of the overridden methods. So with the object, which method would be called? This is called this binding will be evaluated at what time? At runtime. Because overriding is with runtime. It is not with compile time. So the binding the o of overridden methods, which means the overridden and the overriding, the whole concept of overriding that you have in your program, that will be handled at runtime. Your program is bound. I'm using different words so that you will understand the binding actually. Binding means something is connected with some other thing. So overriding is connected with the runtime. So the binding of overridden method methods will be evaluated at runtime. That's why you can say it's a dynamic binding. Number six, if a class is extending, extending means inheriting. If a class is extending an abstract class, which means now the abstract class is parent and you have another class, which is inheriting that abstract class. Abstract class is parent and your this class is now becoming the child of this parent. If a class is extending an abstract class, leave this, leave this, then it has to override all the abstract methods. Normally, in abstract class, you have the abstract methods. Normally, you will see these abstract class and interfaces in detail in CO6, in CO6. But this is just a signal that those things are now coming because their zikr is now happening here. We are mentioning those things. So it means that those things are now coming. So anyhow, if class is extending an abstract class, so you have the abstract class above and you have the class down, which is, for example, now in becoming the child of that abstract class. Abstract classes normally have the abstract methods. So, okay, if a class is extending an abstract class, then it has to override all the abstract methods. You have to override all the methods in the child class. That abstract class will have abstract methods. You have to rewrite all those methods here in that child class. This is what override means. Those would become overridden and here, it is overriding. So you have to rewrite, you have to use all those methods here again in the child class. You have to override all the abstract methods. Unless the class itself is. So when you are overriding all methods here, then this class will also give a picture of that class. Unless the class, this class itself become abstract class. It will contain all the information. And same is the case with interface. If you are, if class is extending an interface, interface also contains abstract methods, 100%. You will see. And then you have to rewrite all those abstract methods here in the child class. And when you will do that, this class also a copy of that class will become a copy of that class. That is what this rule number six is meaning. Now, super keyword in method overriding. I hope that you are already using this keyword because this is not a, something complicated. It's a simple thing. 
So, you already used some keyword which is T H I S, this keyword. Hmm? That this you used in absence or in absence of some object, or when you want to give direction towards some object, you used that T H I S, this keyword. But this super keyword has the same functionality, but you can use this work keyword only for parent class. You can, that THIS, this keyword we used, we can use to signal towards any object of any class. But this super keyword we can use to make a reference only to the parent class, okay? Only to the parent class. Super keyword used for calling the parent class methods and constructors. If you want to call the methods which are available in the parent class, you can call them by using the keyword super. If you don't want to use an object, you can use the keyword super and you can call the methods. Similarly, you can use the word super and you can call the constructors which are available in the parent class. For example, if you will write super dot my, dot my method and if that my method is available in the parent class, then super dot my method, that method would be called. For example, here we have a class ABC starting here, ending here. And this class has method by method, return type is void. And it is just displaying, not displaying, it has just one statement overridden method. Then we have the class demo extending this ABC. ABC is the parent. Now this demo is the child. It has now a method, my method and starting. And here it is ending. But here in the beginning, we are using this super keyword, super dot my method. So this method, when this method will be called, this super dot my method will go to the parent and it will call the my method here. So it will call this method first and then it will come here next after executing that statement, it will come to the next statement and the overriding method this statement will be executed and it is ended. Now here it is the main method. We are creating an object here, object for the demo class, left hand side and right hand side is the same. So this is the object for the child class and we are calling obj.my method. So which method would be called, this one or that one? Both is, is the answer later on. But first, here with this statement, which method is called? This one, yes. overridden method, okay? This method would be called, okay? Call it and execute its statement. And here, super dot my method is calling this one. So, okay, then control will shift here. And if this message, overridden method will be displayed here first. And then we uh, will execute this statement, overriding method, and this is the output. This is the use of the super keyword. Through this super keyword, you are calling the methods of the parent class only. You cannot call the methods of the child class through this super keyword. You can use this keyword anywhere and it is linked with the parent class. Yes. Part one. Parent. Parent okay. Part two is child class. Child class. What do you want to ask? Oh, I am focusing on this super keyword. Okay. Uh, and super keyword we use to call methods and constructors available in the parent class. 
keep this in your mind that super keyword is only for the parent class okay there is no part one no part two okay super keyword and in the parent class if this is a class what would be the information available in that parent class their methods constructors fields how much information you can write in a class you can write fields in a class. You can write constructors in a class. You can write methods in a class. Super keyword is linked with only parent. Through the super keyword, you can access methods, constructors available in the parent class. Okay. In the parent class, if methods and constructors are available, you can call them through the object. Or you can call them through the super keyword. So now there is no part one or part two. Okay, leave it somewhere. So this is a program. And here I can use this super keyword in any class to call the methods of the parent class. Okay. Oh, yes if if you want to access the super uh, parent parent class do not what is your name do not yeah do not try to memorize everything try to understand everything i think that you normally try to memorize everything is it true or not and you are making your own assumptions in your mind to, to memorize those things. This is not something which needs to be memorized. This is something which needs to be understood. Okay, don't memorize it. Just understand it that super through, through the super keyword, we can access the methods and construct of halas. Nothing else is needed. Okay, but you want to keep this program in your mind. You want to memorize this program in your mind. So that's why you are asking part one, part two are like that. Leave it. Okay, leave it. That is not needed. Okay, these are some more examples. On the right hand side, this is called example one. On the left hand side, also, uh, yes. On the left hand side, this is called example two. So this example two is compile time, which is the example of the method overloading, which you already have seen in the section one, in the part one of this lecture. And uh, this example one is runtime polymorphism on the right hand side, which you already, you have the understanding of this program. Uh, now, after having this second part of this lecture, anyhow, we can, uh, pass through these programs quickly. For example, here, this is method overloading. But first, do it this one, because this is now in your mind. Example one, runtime polymorphism. This is class animal, and this class has a uh, method sound, and there is only one message in it. Animal is making a sound class. So this is the sound method. Then we have the class horse extending this animal class. And then we have the sound method again. So this is overridden method. This is now overriding and starting, ending. And we are printing different message in it because we are making it for the horse. So the nay is the sound for the horse. And then we have the main method, starting and ending. And here, what is this statement? What kind of this statement is? Dynamic polymorphism. Runtime polymorphism or dynamic method dispatch? Dispatch, yes. This is what I want. Okay. So this is dynamic dis uh, method dispatch. Why? Because the left hand side and the right hand side has the difference. Left hand side we have the parent and the right hand side we have the child class. So now obj dot sound. Due to this right hand side, this sound method of the child class will be executed and you will have the nay in on the output. And if you have a cat class extending this same animal class, 
then you if you have the sound method also same method and system dot out dot print ln and if you have the main method so this is now second program this is one program and that just give extending that concept main program okay and if you will create animal obj is equal to new cat this is again now dynamic method dispatch and then obj dot sound so sound method of from the cat class where is cat class yeah this one so this meow will be displayed by this object and you have that output here. Now, this one, compile time polymorphism. So this was example one, runtime polymorphism. Example two, compile time polymorphism. What is compile time polymorphism? Example of compile time polymorphism is what? This is the part one of this lecture. Method overloading. Method overloading is compile time polymorphism. What is runtime polymorphism? Overriding. Method overriding. Good, good, mashallah. Now you are awake, not sleeping, huh? <laughs> okay. So this is example of method overload, uh, overloading and we have already seen in the beginning section here method overloading okay but now we have to pass through that code quickly uh, just wait uh, it is not difficult it's easy so we have a class and the name of the class is overload and then we have a cl another class we will see in this class we have one method demo and only one argument is passing with integer and printing just printing the value of that variable a is equal to a just printing the value of that a again the if we will use the same method again with different number of arguments so this is one argument here two arguments int a comma int b but the name of the method is same and here we are just printing what are the values of a and b a and b is a and b we are printing so here the number of arguments is different. So this is method overloading. Again, we are using the same name of the method. And here the argument is totally different. Double A, we are passing a double value, which, which is also returning the double value. And then we are just printing a message double. First, we are just showing the value in A. And then we are multiplying A with itself and then returning the value. That is the end for here. And then we have another class, method overloading. This is the name for that class. Okay, you can use that. Starting, and then here we have the ending. At the end, we have the ending here. Anyhow, the ma main method. This is the ending bracket. Excellent. Half ending bracket, okay. So the main method. And then here we are creating an object. And what is that object? Right hand side is overload, this class. And left hand side is overload. So now this ob object can access all the methods available here. So this is just we are defining a variable result and then obj.demo and we are passing 10. So obj has the type overload, so this class. So we will go to find a demo with only one variable so this is the one variable so 10 will be copied and this method will be execute a is equal to 10 that would be the output and then obj dot demo 10 comma 20 so two arguments are passing so obj has the type what overload so i will go here search for demo which will have two arguments this is the one so 10 and 20 will be copied and then this message a and b 10 and 20 will be displayed on the screen and then result is equal to obj.demo.5.5. If you have the statement like that, then the no compiler normally first execute the right-hand side. And then whatever the result you have, it will be assigned to the left-hand side. So that is the rule. So the right-hand side will be executed, obj.demo. So obj has the type overload. So I will go into the overload. And I will search for the demo with 5.5, which is a double R, Float value, you can say. 
So then I will, this is not floor, this is not double. So this is the double. So this will be called 5.5 will be copied here. And then it will be printed double A is equal to 5.5 as you can see on the screen. And then it will be multiplied and returned by this method. Where it will be returned, the, result, the, the value will be returned here. 5.5 multiplied by, multiply by with 5.5, you will have, I don't know, maybe 30. And that 30 will be returned into this variable result. And then this statement will be executed. O dash P is equal to result. Whatever the result, O P, whatever the value this result has, that will be displayed. 30.2 point, uh, yeah, 30.25 is the product of that A multiplied by A. So that is the example of the part one method overloading. That's the end. This chapter is now ended. Alhamdulillah. And we will start with the exception. If you have any question, I am waiting. Uh, because the last uh, step, the, not, not the same, but like, in this exam, uh, example, mm. is, uh, result uh, is equal to uh, the PM 5.5. Uh, yes. Mm. And the result, he, uh, he brings uh, the system with the line double A equal he didn't start the... Yeah. OBJ type demo, okay? This OBJ has what data type overload. So I will go into the overload and I will call the demo with, with double value. That is the demo with double. And then it will execute. So this statement will be executed. Double A and the A. You will have that double A 5.5 here in the output. So that is the reason. And then... It will multiply 5.5 with 5.5. And you have 30.25. That will be, value will be returned by this method. And where this method is called here. So the, here you have 30.25. That result will be assigned to this variable result. Now this variable result has that 30.25, but it is not displayed. Because when you will display it, then it will display it. So then we have that statement system dot out dot printer and o dash p plus result. Now this is that value. We are trying, we want to display the value what it is in this variable. So that 30.25 now will be displayed and it is displayed in this code. So this message is by this statement and this message is by this call. When you call it this statement. Why you didn't just uh, store the result? And the result? You can show the result, no issue. Remove that statement and show the result, no issue. It is just a program. You can even put more system data out that printer and statement, and you can display your own name. This is not an issue. This is not an issue. You can you can remove it if you want. Sorry, 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 sorry. I want to first stop.